This Week at NASA. And there you see uh, the view of the International Space Station from the Progress. The Progress 38 cargo ship that failed to dock with the International Space Station July 2nd fulfilled its mission two days later. The hookup by the unpiloted spacecraft with the ISS was completed at 12.17 p.m. Eastern on the 4th of July. Friday's docking was aborted when the supply craft's telemetry malfunctioned about 28 minutes from the station. The Progress 38 brought almost two tons of food, fuel, and other necessities to the six-member Expedition 24 crew. Expecting the mechanical contact confirmed. Con docking confirmed. Several days earlier, flight engineers Fyodor Yurchikin, Doug Wheelock, and Shannon Walker had made room for the resupply ship by relocating their Soyuz TMA-19 spacecraft from the aft end of the station's Svesta service module to the Rosviet module. The target is 10 meters. Copied. Commander Alexander Skvortsov and flight engineers Mikhail Konyenko and Tracy caldwell Dyson round out the Expedition 24 crew that's conducting more than 130 experiments in microgravity aboard the ISS. All right. It was called Rock On, but instead of headbanging or bobbing to the beat, college students attending this week-long workshop at the Wallops Flight Facility put their heads together with their professors to build and ready experiments for suborbital space flight. We designed circuit boards out of ourselves, which normally they come pre-made in your computers or you know other devices. However, we actually build and took the pieces and soldered them together, and we had to make sure that they functioned properly. The participants from across the country and Puerto Rico placed their completed payloads inside a 35-foot Terrier Orion sounding rocket. Two, one, mark, two, zero. Incredible. It's the third time I've seen it. it. Takes my breath away every time. It's never gonna get old, ever. It's, it's why we're here. Following the flight that took their experiment 75 miles into the atmosphere, the attendees conducted preliminary data analysis and discussed the results. It was amazing, it was incredible. It's a lot better than I expected. Uh, it's the first launch I've ever been to, but definitely very exciting. Also on the rocket was a payload canister called Rocksat, containing 11 experiments similarly built at the two annual Rock-On workshops already held at Wallops. The program is funded by NASA's National Space Grant College and Fellowship Program in partnership with the Colorado and Virginia Space Grant Consortium. Thanks for this opportunity. Anyone who's out there, you know, hoping to do something like this, I highly recommend Rock On, Rock Side. You can't beat it. It's a great feeling. These middle school students found something on Mars that astronomers had overlooked using the camera on NASA's Mars Odyssey Orbiter. The seventh graders from Evergreen Middle School in Cottonwood, California, explored the Martian surface and discovered this cave. NASA's Mars Student Imaging Program made it possible. It allows classrooms nationwide to conduct planetary exploration by specifying where Odyssey's camera should train its lens. The program is run by Arizona State University and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The Apollo Command Module used for the Skylab 3 mission has a new home. The module now serves as a stunning centerpiece among the more than 40 exhibits and artifacts housed at the Glenn Research Center's visitor complex. Launched in 1973, Skylab was the United States' first space station. Three three-man missions, Skylab 2, 3, and 4, conducted nearly 300 scientific and technical experiments over the next six years. The crews visited Skylab and returned to Earth in Apollo spacecraft. Skylab missions proved that astronauts could live and work in space for long periods of time, laying the groundwork for the longer duration missions of the International Space Station. For a time, the Skylab 3 crew of Alan Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Lausma held nine international records for spacewalks and time spent in space. Nearly 90,000 people have passed through the doors of the Glenn Visitor Center since it opened in March of this year. Oh, let's 
The annual Celebrate Goddard Day was held on the Space Flight Center's campus in Greenbelt, Maryland. The event pays tribute to Goddard's diverse and unique workforce and its legacy of success. This year's theme was Goddard, uniting people, understanding our world. Exhibits, a car show, tours, and the first ever Celebrate Goddard Day Parade were all part of the day's entertainment. The festivities also commemorated the Hubble Space Telescope's 20th anniversary. We're honored today to have our colleagues and NASA friends and, and high-flying ones back uh, with us from STS. The STS-132 crew traveled to the Stennis Space Center for a post-flight visit with employees and their families. Commander Ken Ham, pilot Tony Antonelli, and mission specialists Steve Bowen, Mike Good, Garrett Reisman, and Pierce Sellers shared highlights of their delivery of an integrated cargo carrier and a Russian-built mini-research module to the International Space Station. STS-132 launched on May 14th and returned to Kennedy Space Center 12 days later to conclude the last scheduled voyage of Space Shuttle Atlantis. The legacy of Atlantis now in the history books. After the presentation, the crew posed for pictures with Stennis employees and their families at the center's popular summer activity, AstroCamp. Scores of young faces were seen at the Dryden Flight Research Center on Take Your Children to Work Day. About 150 children of employees got a feel for what it's like to work at Dryden, touring shops and hangars, checking out aircraft, and visiting mission control rooms. Three, two, one. They also launched a weather balloon, participated in an ejection seat demonstration, and even sampled dried food products eaten by astronauts on space missions. By sharing these experiences, parents and NASA hope to open young eyes to career possibilities in the world of aerospace. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.